Hello, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. I am so delighted to be here today. I'm effervescent, really. I'm, I'm just, I'm beside myself, truly. I'm, I'm, I'm over here. That's how beside myself I am to be here tonight. So I have to tell you, um, Miss Andrea, do you have the picture on a little screen that you can pull up? Because I was so concerned about getting my glasses and my scarf right for tonight. Thank you that I left the actual ornament in the car, but I'm, we're going to build a new one during this demo. So I'm going to um, very slowly, thanks. So that's, um, that is the demo that we're doing, and I'm so very excited. And um, since I don't have a rockin' craft cam, I'm going to do this very interesting slow pan of the madness that is my desk. And I'm purposely trying to avoid a little something called the boob cam because nobody needs to see how far south these girls are heading. <laughs> it's just not pretty. Here's the supplies. Here is the little hand that is going to help me by holding the camera for you. So now we have... Oh, 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 almost got boob cam there. Can't be having the boob cam. Okay, we're safe with keyboard cam. Now, let me move keyboard out of the cam so that we can have something akin to craft cam. Here are the little boxes. That's the little label. Look at that, ready to go blank board box. These little shadow boxes, they come four in a pack. Aren't they cute? Look how cute. So we're going to crack open this bad boy, and um, guess what? Hazel's uh, pretend accent that she doesn't really have is quickly turning into Lisa's accent. Woohoo! Okay, so here's the little um, here's the little guy that we're working with. Okay, this is just it's called um, it's a heavy duty white illustration board. Y T M H. I'll tell you where to get those boxes at lisalizalu.com. I sell them on my website. They're adorable. They have a really nice little um, acetate lid. Um, they're very nice, sturdy, solid white, um, like an illustration board, really nice, sturdy white board all the way around. And it takes paint beautifully, and it takes ink beautifully. And I'm going to show you the quickie, fast way to ink it up with ink pads. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a cute little ornament, but before we start inking it up, we have to drill a little hole. Um, so right here in the corner, we're going to drill a little hole with our little craft punch. And what's important to remember is that you, you need to make sure that the hole is um, behind where the lid goes. So you want to you want to make yourself a little marky. Um, whoops, hold on. I'm losing my pen. It fell on the floor. I'm going to make a little marky right about here so that you know where to punch a little hole and that's going to be where we're going to thread through the um, the uh, floss a little later to hang it with. All right. I'm actually going to maybe double up and make the hole just a little larger. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to take, um, later I'm going to take some floss and I'm going to show you how to thread it through using a button and some beads. Okay, so that's that. Now, in the back of this, I'm going to add this adorable little paper, and I'm actually um, doing something that's not quite as Christmassy as my original um, demo, but normally I would glue this all down so that it's a cute little backdrop, and then if you want, you can also put matching paper on the sides to give your shadow box a little backdrop. Now, what you can put inside here is a picture, like the one that I did, Yes, Siobhan, I morphed. I morphed before your very ears. Did you Did you hear me? Um, I haven't quite gotten my Saturday Night Live accent down yet for Hazel. But, you know, hey, I set up a Facebook profile for her, so, you know, I thought that was pretty good. Anyway, so you're going to put a nice, pretty piece of paper in the back. And um, I chose this sort of orange and purples right now because I'm actually um, killing two birds Killing me softly with his song. Actually, no, I'm killing two birds with one stone um, by doing uh, a slightly different color thing. So I am working with some really nice pigment ink um, to 
basically paint with. And Andrea knows how easy and fast it is to paint with rubber stamp pads. If you are working with chalk ink like this, that's really cool too, but you probably want to spritz after you've painted with a little sealer like this. You see that? This is a fixative for pastel work, and this happens to be a non-toxic one, non-stinky, non-toxic, and it will help chalk inks and other kinds of um, pastels and pencils and crayons. It'll help them uh, adhere nicely to your um, paper or canvas or whatever you're working on. So this stuff's really, really cool. So I highly recommend that if you're working with chalk inks. So I'm going to start with this um, purple color. And I'm going to just slam it on, slam it on. Ooh, but you know what I'm going to do first? So I'm going to cover up my little cellophane. On that sample that you saw, I actually cut the cellophane out because I didn't want the glare because, well, I'll, I'm lying. I actually um, cut it out because I got paint all over it. <laughs> so with every mistake is a design opportunity. And I like to pretend that I cut it out on purpose because I didn't want the glare. But in truth be told, I um, screwed up and forgot to cover it before I started painting. So now I'm using my little post-it notes to mask off my um, cellophane. And it's funny, I, I first made a little mask out of like chipboard and put it inside here, and then I realized if I was going to make a whole bunch of these, um, I had a hard time getting the chipboard out before this dried, and so um, I found post-it notes were just easier to remove. So And then I can just get it masked right in, tucked in nice and tight. Okay, so now I've got my ink pad, and what I love about these sort of cat eye shaped or teardrop shaped ink pads is um, is the, the points really allow you to work them like a brush. Um, be careful though not to push too hard because these will come off and then you have to glue them back on and then it's a pain in the butt. Um, so pretty much, let me get into camera here, you're just going to give it a nice kind of distressed rubbing, and that you can see just how fast it is. And it kind of goes a little darker on the edges. And I'm going to blend another color in so I'm not worried too much about being perfect. Um, so I'm just giving it a kind of a nice, and this dries pretty quick, so you don't have to worry about, like, you know, with paint, you have to, like, paint part of it and then let it sit for a while because you can't pick it up again until it dries. And that's why I like kind of painting with um, ink pads because you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, then I would do the same with this. And I'm not even going to worry too much about painting this side because that's going to be covered by the lid when it's hanging. But, you know, if I wanted to take my time, I could, you know, paint it up real nice. And then I could also put on the bottom, I could sign the bottom, or I could put another uh, matching piece of paper on the bottom to kind of give it another. And then I might um, take right along the edges here and really give it a nice, um, oops, sorry, can you see that? Give it a nice, smooth kind of... Um, darker edge just to kind of finish it off and the same thing with the side seams here um, just to really give it okay so that I, so I've got some color base color on with the, the one that's darker and now I'm going to take a lighter color which is this sort of um, it's called pumpkin spice and I kind of liked how the purple and the orange kind of blended together so I'm, I'm just going to kind of dab this and see how I like how it blends and just kind of let the colors smudge together so that it kind of just gives you this little bit of a distressed look. I love working with distress because it's very forgiving and it just, I don't know, I am all about the process, people. I enjoy the journey and I'm not too worried about the destination. So many people give up on their creative, you know, spark because they don't like how things turn out, but you know, you really got to just enjoy the process and just enjoy what you can do with it. So um, I'm blending the colors there and then when I'm you know kind of done with that then I would take my little mask off to make sure that I keep my window nice and clean and then I'm ready um, to uh, thread my needle. I'm trying to keep an eye on the time. Where'd my little hole go? Here's my hole. So have you guys seen these beading needles that are um, that are these big wah, 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 these really thin beading needles that have the monster eye from hell. I love these beading needles. I got it at a beading store, and it's, it's um, closed at both ends, but they're long and skinny, and it's so easy to thread your floss through there or whatever it is that you want to thread through there. So I've picked a couple of colors of embroidery floss that match. Hold on a second. 
So I've got kind of this um, apricot pumpkin color that I'm just going to thread through and put it right about in the half because I'm going to, um, I want the loopy. And hold on a second. And then I got a matching little purple color that I'm going to thread through. This is kind of too close. Andrea, is this like too close? I Maybe I should, for the next time, put this camera a little further away. But I had the camera kind of far away before, and then I just couldn't really see what was going on. OK, so I've got my, my threads kind of halfway. And what I'm going to do is, um, hang on. I am going to get my button, and I'm going to come down from the top. Is that right? Yes, I'm going to come down from the top, and I'm going to go through my button. Hang on a second. I was looking at the chat room, and I lost my place. OK. I'm going to go through and back up. And the button is just going to act as like a little stopper um, so that um, it's just cuter and flatter than a knot. And um, so I've got my button, and I've threaded it through the hole like that. And so that gives me a really nice, sturdy, hang, hanging doohickey bobber. Um, and then if I wanted to, which I actually do want to, I'm going to string a couple beads right down on to that. So I've got like a, a purple bead. And bear with me, I've got, then I got like an orangey colored bead. And see, I would, I love the, the thickness of this floss and the bright colors, but I could have never beaded, I could have never normally strung a, be, a skinny beading needle with that thick of a floss. And that's what I love about these needles. So there, I've got that on there. And then I'm going to snippy, snippy, snippy. Uh, and then I'm going to tie it off. Now on that sample, I did wire. Um, but this time, I'm just going to do a cute little knot. You could do a little bow. You could do a little knot, whatever you wanted. I'm just going to do a quick little overhand knot. But there's 8 million different ways you could do this. I just thought it might be fun to try something different. Bear with me a second. OK. I'm not feeling very much like a Girl Scout right now. I'm moving too fast. But you know, you get the idea. So I would like just string beads on both sides and have this cute little beaded thing that hang, that to hang it from. OK? So you get the idea on that. What I probably would have done is I probably would have strung both sides through. Or what I'll, what I'll probably do next is um, add beads on this side as well so that you get this cute little double beaded thing like that. So that is that, and then I'm going to close it up, and I'm going to—I've got these cute little embellishments that I'm going to glue right here. I've got a little orange plastic disc and these cute little um, kind of asterisky-looking things that match my paper, and I'm just going to um, glue those in the corner. And then on the inside, I have so many options. I can put a picture in there. I can put a little memento in there. I can put a little Christmas. I can poke a hole through the back and put a little Christmas light in there to hang it off the tree. Um, I could hang this on my kid's doorknob and put their name in there or their school picture in there and have it be a little shadow box that you can take pictures in and out of each year. Um, I also can take my stickles. Where's my thing? There, my distress stickles. And go all around the edge of this to give a little frosting. Who doesn't love a little frosting around the window? Okay, 730.